Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is the student government meeting for MSU, the Student Advocacy Council. Today is February 16th of 2024. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, attendance. I'll start with John. At attendance. G oh. John's here. Thank you. Bree Varco present. Michael Warner present. Tim Coates present. Danny Palacios present. Alejandro Casillas present. Awesome. And then online. Matthew, Matthew Rathbun present. Thanks. Gabe Trujillo present. Awesome. Hey, we meet quorum. Look at us. So proud of us. Who would like to read the mission statement? Thanks, Mike. So. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Thank you, Mike. OK, um, has everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Anything you guys want to add, take away, modify? When you say add, take away, and modify, are you talking about the mission statement or are you? The, the whole agenda or oh, our whole agenda. business? Is there anything like everybody's good? We're good? I want to throw a little announcement in to reference my mother because today is the day she died eight years ago. Okay. So Sounds good. Um, let's do that under new business. And this, is, this is a personal matter. We're going to do it at two minutes and like let us know what you want us to uh, do to support you as a council and we'll evaluate. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks, Kenny. Okay. Anything else? Perfect. Okay. I motion we approve the agenda. I second. Thank you. Second. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Sweet. Um, Perfect. So agenda is approved. Let's move to updates. Mike, do you have anything from the Board of Trustees? I do, yes. Um, Dr. Um, geez, I believe Deputy Provost right now, but Dr. Mora um, sent me and Denny this email um, recently, and I believe this announcement has gone out, but um, this is a, um, a announcement from Dr. Davidson in regards to um, the removal of Dr. Nieto as chair of the Chicago Studies Department. Um, I will Reviewed a few, uh, I will just read a few lines off of this because I think it's important, but um, this is from Dr. Davidson herself. Following a thorough review of the situation and processes related to the appointment and removal of MC Denver department chairs, I have reinstated Chicana Studies Department Chair Dr. Adriana Nieto. Um, and then it goes on to say that Dr. Mora has conducted the review and found that there were no university policies that were violated. However, the review identified areas of in opportunity in leadership performance amongst both parties as well as um, the process surrounding chair appointments and removals. Um, and then there's one more the part I want to add in here. Um, um, it basically goes into saying that, hey, we're going to look at um, how we conduct ourselves. And um, I believe it adds in there that they want to um, provide opportunities for growth and opportunities for movies and trainings on um, the situation. Um, but it, this is ultimately a win for us. This is something we took on and kind of was thrown in our lap last second, last semester. And through our advocacy and through our, I mean, asking tough questions, being at meetings, supporting students, promoting students, uplifting kind of students around this issue. I mean, ultimately, uh, the resolution we wanted occurred. Um, but I definitely think it doesn't end here. Um, we definitely continue to push on. Hey, let's make sure this doesn't happen in the future. Let's make sure like this is continue on. Like people get the necessary training they need, diversity trainings, um, because this whole situation reeked of. Um, a lack of honestly, like, I mean, I'm not, not sure quite what I'm looking for, but there is some definitely some problems with the situation. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. But um, this is a win for us. This is a win for student government. It's a win for the students. Um, students spoke up and we heard. And um, doc, I also have a word that Dr. Adriana Nieto will be taking the position again. So she's accepted the position. So and she gives thanks to us. So yes, she will. She will be. She will be uh, in the position, the chair position. Yeah. So yes. So yeah, 
Um, and a last thing, um, I also met with the provost, our, our new provost. Um, we're going to work on how we can, and uh, we as students can identify areas where Chicano, Chicano studies needs maybe more funding, more opportunities. We're going to work on writing something for her so she can give it to the president and the board and advocate for a bigger um, allotment to be given to them. Because that was another um, concern that students had is, hey, we don't pay enough money to Chicana, Chicana studies, even though that makes up a, a solid majority of students here. So um, yeah, these are some good updates. Um, good work, Council. Well done. Great advocating, Mike. It was, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, the letter does say that um, no university pol uh, policy ha was broken uh, or violated. Uh, the, both parties need uh, professional development. Uh, we all need professional development at the end of the day. Um, but I do think it is important that like we we focus on um, accountability and the professional development of our senior leadership and our administration, given who we are as a student population. Um, but yeah, it was these are good news and. It's awesome, like students advocated for themselves and they like knew what they needed to succeed. And so that was that was really cool. Thanks, Mike. Uh, say, Cab, Gabe. Can we can we add Will to that? Sorry, dude. I sh yeah, can we add Will to the say, Cab? Please. OK, I will. I'll have Will start, Gabe. Cool. So we had the future projects or at least the plans of potentially what um, AHEC is trying to do um, in the future, right? And um, there was a lot of discussion around the concerns of the student voice not being heard or not taking not being taken into account uh, as much in the development of these future plans for campus, um, and thankfully, it was those those alarms were raised, um, and uh, those were the biggest points um, raised during that meeting. Uh, other than that, uh, I did we had Armando there as well, thankfully. And um, as for me, that's that's what I took from this meeting. It was, you know, presenting to SACAB and showing what what plans they had for, you know, development in the future. And of course, um, CU, Denver, uh, CCD, and ourselves raised those concerns about student voices and a lack of student voices and input and the influence of third parties helping develop these uh, future uh, future infrastructure. Thanks, Will. Gabe, anything you want to add to the recycle updates? Yeah, um, I think also when it comes to that, that uh, idea of what is the representation on campus, another point that was brought up was um, how <clears throat> there is so ABOD, the area board of directors, uh, before ideas go to them, they go to the IPG committee. Um, and the IPG committee is made up of um, I'm not quite sure how many like representatives from each school, but but th there's only supposedly one student representative on that. That is not however, that seat is not filled and it's still kind of up up in the up in the air of do they want to have a student on that? Um, and so they showed us kind of like this decision model about projects in the future and students were just not a like anywhere in that model of how is AHEC and ABOD and institutions moving forward going to collaborate. There was like no students meant like student role in that at all. And I think that that just goes to show where students are seen as um, and where students land on this campus. And I think additionally, you know, with the idea of just having one student representative representing more than 40,000 students on campus and in, in each campus has their own needs and wants and stuff. 
I think it's just very unethical, right? And un- unequitable to really put that on one person and to also not allow that, especially in the IPG committee, to not even have like that person there right now and to have that in the air and to even question, right? Of like, oh, do we want students here? You know, like we are the majority stakeholders. We are the reason that this campus, these campuses exist. And so to just hear that of like, oh, do you even want students? You know, it's kind of very concerning in many ways, but yeah. And Will got the rest of it. Thank you, Will. It's okay. Um, yeah, would you just like keep us updated in the advocacy work and like if we also need to go meet with someone or like what do you need from the rest of us to make sure that yeah students are represented there as yes, well. Um, thank you for for that. Um, I definitely would have liked to see more counselors in today's meeting. I did post about it. I'm sorry. I know it was a little bit last minute um yesterday but that's about the time i got the information but uh yeah any any time i get information about big meetings like that um and post if you have time you know of course um please 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 come by and uh listen and give your uh feedback awesome and also and just adding on to that like real quick um i also did mention this meeting was going to happen last friday um, and so there's has been on everyone's radar. And while I also understand that, you know, everyone has things that are going on, things are happening, the semester is starting to gear up and all that fun stuff. However, you know, it was, I think that there's power in numbers and power in people. And, and like, just from the CU Denver side, we saw at least like three other people from the student government there asking these questions and really getting into this nitty gritty of what is it, um, of student representation on this campus, right? And and student representation on AHEC and overall. So yeah, thank you all. Okay. We'll make sure to be a better support in that sense, because this is important. Thanks, guys. Uh, Re, the accountability committee. Yes. So Gabe and I met this week about issues and, you know, it's really hard to be part of an accountability committee where we're all making sure we're showing up and not stepping on toes and following rules and things. So, you know, bear with us as we go through these things and then address them with with our members, because there are a couple of things that, you know, we're sending out information and making sure we're having talks with people when we need to. And, you know, that's going to happen, you know, for the rest of this term. So it's important that we all remember rules about how we show up, how we represent TSAC, and how we use space, all kinds of things like that. So if you need, you know, if you're not sure of things like this, ask. And, you know, don't just make assumptions and, and charge forward with things when you when you want to do your best, but you you really need, we all need to be a paying attention to rules. I mean, they're there for a reason. We all need to adhere to them. So thank you for that. And I'll just use this also as a little seg segue to say, remember next Friday, we're having our training for the safety um, with Andrew. We're going to have lunch. Armando's arranging, arranging lunch for us. It's going to be on this floor. Um, Armando will give us the room, but it's on this floor on the other side. You know, as you exit the elevators, head left instead of right. Um, starting at 11 until 1230, and then we'll skip on over here. Hopefully we have a few minutes to spare to skip over here for our regular meeting because we couldn't get it ahead of this room ahead of time. There's something else happening. Yes, Mike. Um, do you <clears throat> do either you, um, you guys are, or Kenny, can you guys send the calendar invite out just to put it on the calendar? Sure. Yes, because okay. I, because like unless an event's on my calendar, I won't be attending. I, you got that's it. That's how I manage my schedule. So I'll make sure everyone's okay. invited. That's all I have for now. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ree. Spicy today. This is math. <laughs> uh, PR committee, Matt. Yeah, so we're trying to meet next week to go over the next couple of events. Um, I've already been pulling some stuff together around them. I just want to meet with the committee to make some more concrete decisions. 
Um, and then actually my next piece might be more an open floor announcement. OK, um, I unfortunately that was my fault. I, I, I skipped the budget committee. So do you want to? Sorry, Alejandro, go ahead. Yeah, all good. Uh, yeah, just a quick update. So we had another budget committee meeting today um, with the surplus that we had. We ended up deciding to do a scholarship opportunity on behalf of TSEC and then also um, some office remodeling and then the rest of the surplus um, is going to be used for uh, Rowdy's Corner, and I'll get more into that once I read the resolution. Sweet. I have a Do Yeah, Dr. Brown. Hi, Alejandro. Um, let's talk about scholarship because I don't know that you all can use your student fee dollars to, to do scholarships. So this has come up in the past. And I, we need to connect on that and verify that you can redirect funds to do scholarships because I don't think you can. Sorry. Can I, I can I just because. So we want to use it to somehow fund like student books so the students can like come in and then we like pay for the books uh, and the, the project is to like get with you guys and figure out a system that we can do that. So let's get together and see if yeah. we can, if we can do that. That might be a potential a potential opportunity, a workaround might be getting the list of books and us ordering them through Amazon or some other, you know, wherever and paying for them with a, a corporate card yeah. and then you offering them that way. But like in terms of scholarship money going directly to students, that can't happen. Yeah, no, no, we, we weren't thinking. We, we, uh, I think we were thinking of like, again, perhaps like a Excel sheet and like, this is a book I need. Like you get one book. Okay. And yep. then we order it for them. OK, we something. can talk about the logistics offline. Yeah. Then that makes more sense. I thought you were like wanting to give like money to no, no, no. students. <laughs> like, no, 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 we wanted to buy All the right. books for them. Okay. Yeah, I could have worded that differently. I'm sorry. OK, no book scholarship through. And we'll just have to figure out logistically what that looks like. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Sorry. No, thank you. Yeah, that was <laughs> that's what we yeah, yeah, that was our fault too. <laughs> Mike. Alex, are you done with your update? Can I add on to it? Yeah, you, yeah. OK, uh, wait, okay. is this I'm adding on you adding to the budget? OK, go ahead. Um, we are meeting next Wednesday from <laughs> I believe it's at 330 to 430. We're going to reimagine. We're going to use some of the surplus and our actual budgets Wednesday, Wednesday. Is it Thursday? Oh, good. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, it's on it's on the calendar, but um, it's on my calendar, so I'll be there. Um, so, but we're going to reimagine the office. We're going to look at some new, like things that we can get new desks. We're going to work on getting the old stuff out and the new stuff in, make it nice and brighter. So, you have any um, strong opinions on that or budget constraints? Please be at that meeting um, and voice them, or else we will um, continue as a. But um, yeah, so that will be next what, next Thursday. We're going to reimagine this office, make it more student friendly, and make it more um, welcoming. So, yes. Which meeting do you want? Me to attend to talk about office stuff. I mean, do you have any ideas? I'm more I'm more happy to, to. If you have some ideas, I'm more I can meet with you about that. Well, uh, Amanda and I were talking uh, earlier today, and I was going to order some plants, but the 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 concern was that no one would maintain them. So I'm going to buy plants and donate them myself because I know that when you bring life to an office, you bring life to the people. Mm -hmm. And it prevents depression when you're taking care of something outside of yourself. So I'm going to spearhead that. Yeah. To just let you know. You feel like the windows outside that main door, the main windows? Because like I wouldn't put them in the back of the office because no light back there. Well, I've covered that base too. I'll be getting some um, solar power, not solar power, the but like they have in the food pantry where Miguel bought that light that oh, is yeah. over. The, yeah, I'll get some of those too. You you have your budget for that, right? No, I have to, I was instructed, it has to come out of my pocket. Yeah, because so. <clears throat> that's something that thinking of realistically the auxiliary budget and just the office, I can't guarantee that someone's going to come in and water those when you are at a session on summaries when you're gone for the weekends oh. and things like that. So we have to be. I'll talk, I'll talk about the lights. I don't, the plants probably not, but like the lights. The light. Lights can the come, lights we can buy, yeah. Yeah, those can come. You have, you have a budget of six six $6,000. The lights for plants and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I love to have more lights in my office. 
Okay. And then I, I don't see why our executive assistant can't every once in a while go water plant. But so yeah, but we can let's you want me offline and talk about that? Yes, sir. Let's do that. Okay. Is budget good? Is budget good? Awesome. This is uh John Sustainability Committee. So I have been in communication with Miss Rachel. I forgot her last name. She's connected with the Phoenix Center. So she and I have been talking directly. I got her information and I'll understand more about the flow project and how money comes through and get the 411 so I could take it to the next level. So that's the update for now. Awesome. Thank you. Um, open announcements. I know Matt had one uh, just so I can make and then John has one. OK, hold on. Give me a second. So I have Matt. I have John. I have Alejandro. Anyone else? Gabe has, Gabe has one. Um, I, I have. have a yeah, please go ahead to, to the sustainability committee. Yes. Yes, go ahead. So sorry. Um, John, just real quick. Did you get my my forwarded emails again? Um, you got to speak up. I didn't hear you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I saw in the chat that you wanted me to forward you the emails again about on flow did you receive those no i didn't because i probably didn't look at the chat myself so i'll have to go back and look at it well tell me what the requirement what what is it you like to me to answer oh no, uh, you just asked me to 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 send you all the emails again and, and i just want to make sure that you did get them Oh, OK, well, would you be so kind to resend me the emails? Then that way I'll go forward. OK, cool. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, Gabe, do you I mean, Gabe, do you have something for open announcements or, or should I you do the list? No, no. no. OK, uh, Matt. Oh, we have six minutes until um, public comment. Yeah, Matt, go ahead. Mind brief as I can. Um, so I've been watching some concerns around the fact that there's no information on MSU Denver's website about the fact we get free mental health care at the health center, um, dietitian support, smoking cessation, um, vaccines, and STI and STD testing. Um, but I did talk to Greg Gorman in the Dean of Students office about this. Um, he's and he works in compliance. He's the prevention compliance coordinator, so I think he's going to take a look at it and try and make that more spread out. Um, he also referenced that he does the, the what do you call them? the annual security reports. Um, I think he's working on a survey for stakeholders in the coming weeks that I would like to bring to the appropriate committee to help get um, those surveys and feedback from our students. OK, um, OK, just let us know how we can support you. All right. Thanks. Do um, you have an open announcement? Yes. OK, um, two things. I said that you all were going to let me um, speak about my mother. Next week, I'm going to have a video together that will be about a minute or two, really honoring my mother and some things so I'll have that for next meeting and then I want to say thank you for that and also uh, I noticed on the back in the future we're going to vote for the deactivation of the tri-institutional committee I'd like to take that over so I'm throwing that in the open announcement because I've been communicating with the three entities with some EBT plans so I would like it to continue okay so with uh, letting you speak about your mother, do you, with the so we we added you to the agenda today about your mother. You're going to need time today and next week as well. Uh, I'm today. Yes, today I'm just asking for a moment of silence in reference to her. And then next week I'll have a video because I'm not going to half step this thing with my mother. OK, so I'm not completely prepared. OK. No worries. Um, if you let's put it in the agenda. Find someone that can like before you put that in the agenda, just so that we have it about the video next week. 
in oh next, so for, for next week to add it to the agenda next week yes ma'am so that you have an allocated time yes ma'am thank you yeah thank you uh alejandro um yeah so i just wanted to mention real quick that um a group that is taking uh that's going to go on a guatemala trip for um community service <laughs> A pair of students are going to come and present next week, next Friday at 1.30. I'm just putting it up there so everybody's aware of it. And then also, um, if I could just kindly request from the PR committee to post the flyers since it wasn't posted on Tuesday, the latest, as we agreed last week. And um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, okay. and uh, one more thing. Um, yeah, again, uh, the Minds of a Barrier Scholarship closes today, so make sure y'all apply if you haven't. Thank you. Repeat that the part about apply for what? The Minds of Auraria Scholarship. Uh, it closes today. The Mind for Auraria Scholarship? Minds of Auraria Scholarship. Minds of Auraria. There is a poster in the door of city of, of the TSAC Missy. office. Yeah, Mind. it was the one that I was taping up. Uh, Michael? <clears throat> yes, um, I got your flyer. Um, I'm a poster now. Apologies. Cool, thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, and then it's me. Cool. So the university is trying to get the accreditation, uh, the accreditation, <laughs> the, the uh, Carnegie validation, which it evaluates the university as a, like a diverse community. Um, I am meeting with Tracy. I can't remember her last name. My apologies. Uh, next week, and she just wants to know what TSAC does, what is like our shared governance structure, and how do we get the students to be civic, civically involved. Uh, so that's going to happen in two weeks. Um, I won't be here on March 1st. I have some DC internship things that I need to take care of. So my vice chair here will be taking care of the meeting that day. Thank you. And uh, can we pull up the thing? Oh, I have less than a minute, and if someone is here to speak, I will definitely make way for public comment. Awesome. Um, so Dr. Simpkins and other people are coming in next week. And within the student success plan that the university has going on, we have to pick three out of these. Yes, one of each category. I will leave this in the chat. Uh, we don't have to talk about it right now. I actually would like for us to like think about it in our own time. Um, I just want like this is just an open announcement. I will leave this picture in the chat. Yes, Gabe. Yeah, I actually do have an open announcement. Oh, scary. Can you stand oh, chat, please? Okay, okay. I will put you after me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's about how to how to gain and rebuild trust. You know and. Keep in mind that the goal about the, the goal of this is student success and engagement, graduation rates, and all of the above. Um, so yeah, I'll draw this in the chat. Just think about it so we can talk to them. Uh, whatever our res whatever whatever we end up talking about next week on this, I have to bring to president's cabinet at the end of the month. So just just let me know what you think by next week. Cool. Dr. Brown. Cool. Okay. Oh, sorry, Dr. Brown. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Um, so for context, this is regarding the, the survey that was conducted with uh, faculty, staff, and students. And so these are the themes, right, that were pulled from that. So okay. they're asking for TSAC to identify one focus area from each of the subgroups. Is that I what I understand? So. Okay. I believe so. Um, I will leave more instructions in the chat. Okay. Yeah, well, according to the email that I got. And then by once you identify them, then what what uh, I have to bring them to president's cabinet. Oh, OK. Yeah, that uh, those are the things that you all believe that mm -hmm. should be focused on mm -hmm. on behalf of student success. Yes, got it. OK, yeah, and cool. I will reread read the email. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I, just I, curious because we just presented these results like for my areas and we're also putting together action plans. So I'd be really interested to hear what you all you all think. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Barone. Uh, Gabe. 
Oh, yeah, we are into public comment. Uh, but if anybody's here and would like to say something, if not, we're going to keep going and I will. Oh, hi, Sarah. Hi, how are, how are you guys? Doing well. How are you? I'm good. Um, I just want to hop in real quick here because I feel like I've just had some weird hours in on campus lately this semester. Um, for the Metropolitan, we would like to continue what we did last year with some election coverage, like pre-election coverage for TSAC. Um, I just haven't been able to like catch anyone in person to talk. Um, so I just wanted to like put that feeler out there and let you guys know that we should be reaching out soon. And if there's like anything we can like do to help um, collaborate more on this. Um, Cause I know like we got a lot of like the current people who are running last year for like the next year who are already on council, but we were, had a more hard time reaching um, like new candidates who are running for TSAC. And we'd love to be able to like bridge that connection and be able to get that information out there. So if there's, yeah, just anything we could do in the future and what you guys are planning for elections. Hey, Sarah. Um, yes, we are. It's Armando. We are more than happy to help. Uh, we just hired an elections manager, but are you on campus on Tuesdays by chance? No, that's like the one day I'm not here. I'm, on, <laughs> okay. I'm here um, on Mondays. Um, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Okay, I have a interview actually with Noticiero Met on Tuesday afternoon. I don't know if you want to, you know, hop in and collab on some of those questions or anything, so you can start some things. But um, just reach out to me, and we can schedule some time to meet, and we would love your your help for sure. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna put this link in the chat. This is like something we did um, last year, which is like a meet the candidates. And just we're looking to do something similar to this. So awesome. thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Sarah. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Um, sweet. Sorry, Gabe. No, you're good. No worries at all. Um, I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to Denny for her amazing and wonderful job presenting at SAB. Um, thank you, Denny, for that amazing presentation and Armando too, and to anyone else who helped put that together. It was wonderful uh, to see you all there. Yeah, thank you so much. And then just an update, we are beginning our, our deliberations for SAB. And so that will come soon, eventually, you know. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Gabe, I appreciate that. Um, okay, anybody else on open floor? Sweet, we'll move to faculty, senate, and yeah, so that's me. Um, so the policy that we talked about uh, on exempting assignments for student athletes, it is not exempting the assignments, it is creating a flexible process for them to make up the assignments in their, if they're out of town or having games. Uh, they will be excused uh, absences. Uh, and like I said, it now it has passed to faculty senate. It is not an academic policy com committee anymore. It has passed to like the, the, the big committee that like passes everything. Uh, and then from that it gets to the board and then to the president. And yeah, that's what that has passed to the next line. Um, I think that the word there's a caveat there before it passes that it is any university um, sponsored event. So as a TSAC member, you know, you might and you are doing something that is sponsored event. Just make sure you also claim that because just saying that out there. So we make sure that everybody is part of this policy if it passes and if it is, and if it isn't stated. Um, or an anybody else, anybody else that you know? Um, what else? No, that was it. Uh, UPAC hasn't met yet. And that's it. And then for the next one, uh, Council of Chairs and Directors. Uh, they are meeting next week, so I have nothing on that. 
Try institutional leaders committee will. I haven't met with uh, UCD or CCD. I have met with them offline, but uh, regarding the committee itself, I will discuss more when we get to the vote or not of the de deactivation of the tri-institutional committee. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Will. Advisor updates. Who wants to go first? Yay. All right. So a couple things. We officially have hired our elections manager. We have hired Sam Young, a uh, political science student, um, very interested in elections. Government has some, you know, organization elections background from high school and from the student organization level at the college. So that's great. Um, next is I have sent you all the elections timeline <clears throat> in the chat throughout the week. Um, nothing really is needed on UR's part, but just so you all are aware, and if people ask you, you know, when are packets due, when are elections, X, Y, and Z, you have that information already readily available. Um, I'm working on some marketing and all that kind of stuff so we can really get it out, get it out. I just, it's it's been some time. Um, and then third was the Constitution edits. I did receive those, so thank you, Re, Mike, the council, for taking the lead on that. Although large issue is you accepted all the changes so i don't know what was changed or added so i need to see those red lines because that's what i need to present for you all to vote on yes change like to vote on to approve or to deny the change that makes sense good so me and Ray talked about this um there should be two copies re made a copy of the copy that we accepted the changes on and there should be, there, yeah, and there should be in the ether somewhere a, another copy before change, the before okay. changes. Um, and then what I was going to do is this either next week or the week after, whenever legal gets through it, that's going to be the next amendment is all the changes. And what we probably have to do is go through and vote through each change. Well, so probably, that's, I was taking that on. Oh, okay. So what I need from you all then is the original copy before. Not, before. not so much the original. I need the original with the red lines of what you are trying to change. Yeah. Correct. So instead of accepting everything, I need everything to be standing as redlined. I don't know if you can undo that or if you know exactly what you all changed. But remake a copy of it and then you could do edit unchanged. I have made a copy of it. Whatever everybody copies is down the side. So let me see if I can undo Yeah, I just I need all of the suggestions. So because that's what I'm gonna put forth for you all to vote on. Lovely. Accept, not accept, X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense for everybody? <laughs> yes. But other than that, we are making way. Great job. I don't want to diminish that effort. That is a large feat that you all took on. Um, and second, Dr. Brown and I finished our revisions of the election code. I'm just fine-tuning one last line that I've been pondering on for the last day. <laughs> it's literally one sentence, and then I can get that to you probably within the next hour or so. Um, but that doesn't need to be voted on, or do the elections code is so says the elections manager, and I'm serving as elections manager. I'm putting forth for you I to just you adopt you. that. Correct. Okay, I have Mike, right? and then I have Will. No. Oh, and Matt. Okay, Matt. I mean, sorry, Mike, Will, Matt. Yeah. Yes. So what I believe needs to happen is the elections code needs to be adopted in our constitution. So what needs to happen is that needs. So send me the copy you have. And I can get an amendment up next week that we vote on and it's officially accept because quite technicality they got the recall done, but like it wasn't mentioned in there. So would just said do you want that? Do you want me to do that for you? Uh say the last part. Do you want me to do what? Do you want me to make that amendment for you and present it next week? Yeah, because I can't make amendments. So I will present that to you so you all can formally adopt it. But just be sure, Re and Mike help Re with making sure that that amendment is in the edits <laughs> that we're remaking. We have to double back a little bit. Before you went through and accepted, perfect. Okay. Okay. No, she has yeah. that version yeah. control. Yeah, so we I can send it to you, and then you will adopt it immediately, but also make sure it's adopted in the edits. Yeah, so what we'll do is the next amendment will be to 
the elections code. We'll add that in there, and then the Correct. next one will be the ones changing the code. Correct. Okay. <laughs> I, is, at that point, at this point, I'm over. Yeah. Okay. Right now. It's important that we uh, do the election codes first so that we can move forward with election yeah. and then the additional voting on all of the other changes and edits to the Constitution can take a little bit more time. The thing that we need to prioritize right now is codifying the elections codes. So that is priority. And then the other pieces we can take a little bit more time on. So just so not that we want to take a lot of time. We want to get it done, but I just want to make sure that we're um, separating those two things out. Sounds good. Would you? Yeah. Um, can someone just tell tell me when that's ready so I can put on the election? Put it in? You yeah. can put it in the agenda now. It'll be ready by end of the day today. Uh, I leave. OK, so I'll put it in the agenda for next week. Yep. That works. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And I'll produce the document. So. OK. Uh, wait, do you want to produce the resolution? You have a lot. Is that plate. what you said? I'll, I'll take care of this. You have a lot on your plate. So I'll take care of it. OK, thank you, Mike. OK, uh, so I'd you're going to. OK, so you're going to put it in the. You put it in the agenda. And you will do the resolution and you present it as well. Cool. Awesome. So everybody already knows what they have to do. Let's keep the meeting going. Okay. Um, will, you were next in line. Thank you, Ale. Um, I just want to make sure I clear about what you're saying to the council. Um, you're not asking for any input, correct, on the election codes at all? No, as the election services, it's it's seen as conflict of interest of you all kind of making those dark changes. So we present the elections code. You choose to adopt it into your constitution. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. I just want to make Correct. sure. Yes. That's how I feel about it too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Will. And then Matt. Uh, sorry. I actually already did a draft of a resolution to adopt the elections code that I can send you, Mike, if that's helpful. That'd be great. Thank you. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Anything, Dr. Barone, you want to add? Sorry, Dr. Barone. <laughs> no, I think the main thing is getting these election codes adopted into the or the Constitution, and then the next steps will be voting on the various amendments or changes that y'all have made to the Constitution. The other thing is going to be making sure that you all are thinking, and I've been saying this, succession planning, um, potentially getting other folks or students interested in running for positions because the, the timeline is pretty quick, so the turnaround time. So think about in the next month, we should already have people like, yeah, signing up. So that's not that that time will go by quickly. And then remember, campaigning and all of that happens during spring break. So before and after spring break. And so just making sure that you all are aware that things are going to start rolling really, really fast. Um, but thank you for prioritizing the Constitution and, and all the things, because that needs to be solid <laughs> before you all bring in a new council. So I know you have a lot of other committees and a lot of other work happening right now. But I really need you all to prioritize this right now because this is pivotal and critical to bringing on a new board. That's all. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Brown. We've been, yeah, I think <laughs> that's what I was told when I ran. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Sweet. Um, OK, well, nobody said anything else about public comment. Then we have no old business. Let's move into new business. Councilor replacement for Great Review Committee. Hi, Will. Hello, everyone. Floor's yours. So when we first started the council, well, not, you know, our iteration uh, this year, um, we voted in myself and or I voted in, excuse me. I volunteered and so did Kristen. As you all know, Kristen is no longer part of TSAC, so I d we do need someone else to replace her for this grade review committee. And that is why I have brought uh, this to the attention of the council to nominate someone or someone volunteer to be uh, become part of it. Um, do you have the meeting times? 
Oh, there is no meeting times. So this is strictly through email. And basically, I'm not sure if people know what the grade review committee is. First off, is there any confusion on that? Because I can clarify. Mm -hmm. So pretty much a student can appeal their grade and it has to meet certain criteria for us to actually review it. And if it meets that criteria, I we see, review babe. the the situation of what happened with the student and their grade. Um, it does involve like looking through extensive documentation um, if provided and making a decision that will vary uh, not likely, it will impact the students' academic standing at MSU Denver. So it is a, it is a big deal, right? And that's why I think um, I need someone else on there with me because it's great that I can do all of that, but I also think that I sometimes am not perfect. I don't cover everything. I might have a bias. Whatever the case is, I think there should be another person alongside with me on this committee. Thanks, well, Gabe. Awesome. So with that, I nominate myself uh, to fill in then um, for this committee, especially if it's all like via email and stuff. Great. Awesome. Okay, I have one nomination. We cool? Good question. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce Gabe to the chair or to whoever coordinates that committee to make sure that that happens? Yeah, of course. Yes, okay. yes, ma'am. Great, thank you. And if you mm -hmm. can just copy me because I get asked questions. Thank you. Sure thing. Before we confirm, everybody, yeah, we're good with Gabe. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Yes, Gabe. Cool. Well, he said cool. Okay, he said cool. Um. Yeah. Okay. So can I say something? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Gabe, I'll send you the email uh, with uh, with all the information. Introduce you to Mr. Schaefer, and um, we do need to get back to him by Monday. Um, so if you have some time today, I've already reviewed the case. I can catch you up, but I would, uh, if you have time, please look through. It is a uh, time pressing. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you, Gabe, again for stepping up. I appreciate you. Of course, I will wait for those emails. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Bo. Okay, we move to business number two, vote for the activation of transitional committee. I'm gonna give you time, and then we're all, we're gonna have a discussion because we have and we have things to vote on, and we have the faculty diversity task force come in. So, talk, my friend. Okay, I'll just make this pretty clear and quick. Although I do overall think this committee should be deactivated for this semester. If there are people who are interested in the committee and can make that time, I am not opposed to the new person taking over and um, putting in that time and effort, of course. But again, I do think that this decision ultimately lies within the council. So I, I don't. I also want to clarify. I am not sure if I should be voting on the, the deactivation of this committee if I am the chair of it. I don't know if there's some kind of conflict of interest there, so I have to put that out Mike? first. I have Mike on the stack. Go ahead. Um, I don't think it's a conflict of interest. I mean, if you're the chair and you find that this committee is not worth our time, say that. I think the council will agree with your judgments on that matter. Okay, John. So I would like uh, to take over that committee because with discussions of EBT and restrooms and different things that I have ideas for for the council to replicate across both entities, that's something that I will be present for because I'm an idea guy and it's, my ideas are not indigenous to MSU. So I like the idea of the Auraria campus set up. Okay. Um, cool. I want to know. I want to know why. Why you want to be activated? Why exactly? Like, do you feel like it's not hopeful? Okay. So the reasoning behind the deactivation is, I do not believe that there needs to be 
an actual committee necessarily because it it when I do these meetings, it's a very informal setting. What I think could happen is who if there is interest and you reach out to the other SGAs on um, other line through other means and communicate and talk that way and meet with them. I do not see the committee itself as a necessary piece this semester because again, we are low on counselors and uh, we'll, you know, we get more spread thin and whatnot. So if we had the full amount of counselors, I think this would be a be okay to have. I'm not against that, but seeing the current situation that TSEC's in, I do not think that this committee should stand <laughs> unless, unless, right? This is where I kind of, I didn't know there was someone interested until today on the day of uh, proposing the vote. But if there is a counselor willing to meet with the other SGAs and by all means, I am personally overburdened a little bit currently with, you know, again, taking up SACAB and other stuff. So if there is someone out there that wants to take it, I, I do not mind. Um, but I do think that sh that decision doesn't, shouldn't ultimately lie with me as I form part of this council. Okay. Um, Bree and then John. I just, from what I understand in your work in the past and getting together with these SGA presidents, especially CU Denver has been null. And it's not about, maybe it's just about sharing events with them, mm -hmm. really. It's kind of information sharing instead of trying to strike out and do all kinds of new things. And if we keep it at that kind of level, just information sharing. So if they want to be part of something we're doing, you know. Right. So that's no big deal. Yeah, the right response. Yes. So you do bring up a good point. I see you. And then, and it's not something personally that I've wanted to mention, but I think it's it is important to acknowledge that there is been for many reasons, uh, maybe unwillingness or like they're busy with their own things, which is understandable, right? I'm not faulting anyone here. Um, but yes, there is uh, some, it's, it, it can be difficult to work with other SGAs that have their own issues um, to get on the same page because um, I'm sure John's been there. Matthew's been there as well. Um, many times we propose like tri-institutional events and, you know, of course people book their things months and ahead of time and we try to adjust and uh, you know evolve to the, the needs of different schools but i think all, overall because of the condition of tsec i think this is definitely a committee that has a lot of potential I personally i just don't know if this semester it is worth me operating in because of our constraints of our current condition okay i just before we keep saying anything else just we again be mindful of time one and two we have SACAB for a reason like there there is a reason for SACAB and everything that goes through the tri-institutional I personally do see this as extra but that's that's why SACAB exists that's what that this is why SACAB is, is just put together and and every single student in SACAB is very much committed to SACAB and do not have the issues or like unwillingness. Um, yes, John. So I would have to disagree and I'll tell you why. Because last this semester, I'm much more powerful within myself, meditation practice and everything. Um, uh, Leo Tonsil and I went to 1575 East Sherman, which is a lady that we're connecting with to manifest the EBT machines this semester. I have the ability myself personally to pull people together and I don't want to let it go because I can bring the students together. I'm already connected with CU Denver and CCD. I have a personal connection with them and I can take that over myself because it's easy for me to maintain those relationships. And that will further add to say, say, stay cap 
if I'm not able to make it because I build rapports. And so that's the easy thing for me. And I don't want it to disintegrate because the council thinks that it's not necessary. I think it's necessary. I'm willing to put the energy into it. Do you have a direct response? Yeah, I was just going to say your your energy and your opinion works in this matter. I think for the council, they're just trying to say we don't need an organized committee to do this. Special projects can be picked up by each person to work tri-institutionally. So if that's the project you're picking up, you could do it. There's no need for a formal committee title. Does that make sense? I think that I think that's the issue here is that the committee puts power that someone needs to be in that seat and handle all these projects when we're sharing the effort and the power. That's the sense of what we're trying to get at is where we're removing the, the need and the title for a day and time rather than do it at your will. Got you. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. And remember that, that you have the power on the sustainability community. Like you already have that committee and the EBT thing, it's totally a sustainability issue. Okay, uh, I had, I had Matt, and then I had Gabe. I'm gonna let's keep it at two minutes, two minutes, folks, because we got a lot going on. Matt, I think most of what I was gonna say is already been said. I didn't want to lose the project, but I kind of agree with the committee itself isn't really being effective. Okay, thank you, Matt. Gabe, nope. I again. Same as Matt, everything that we're going to say was already said, say cab and, individual, <clears throat> and individualized projects. And I think overall, it's just kind of like the sustainability of the committee moving forward. And if this is, you know, something that committee can be done for other as for other T stacks moving forward, not just us. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Sweet. OK. Uh, so wait, uh, do you we're motioning to just do you want a motion for this? There's no, uh, if there's no like um, conflict of interest, right? Just making sure. No. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I motion to what's the right word? This Dissolve, remove, dissolve, thank you. The Tri Institutional Leaders Committee for this semester. I second that. Hi. Uh, Hi. 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 Hello. Yeah, it looks like it passes. So let's get rid of that in the uh, updates, Kenny. And uh, yeah, and out of Will's thing in the agenda as well. Yes, Will. Real quick, just so for clatter, clatter, ah, clarity, excuse me. Um, I will email the other. Um, uh, SGA governments about the decision from the council. So do not worry about that. I'll take care of that. And uh, if John, if you do wish to interact with the, you know, UCD SGA, we can, we, I can set up those lines, you know, if you want. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to food pantry donation resolution. Wait, that's where we're at. Where are we? Oh, the discussion for mandatory training. My bad. Go ahead, Will. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it's come to my attention that, you know, we do these trainings every year, the mandatory ones. Um, and I feel like they, they lack a little bit. Personally, I do think um, I was I came to Dr. Barone for advice on this. I do think that we should start integrating the offices of like, I'm not sure what the correct title that they fall under, CESA, or the CESA, excuse me, such as the LGBTQ+, the Veterans Office, um, the Phoenix Center, and I'm uh, peer mentoring, I'm not sure if they fall under. Well, the CESA offices, those three um, that I'm aware of, I think, I think they should become part of the training, at least getting to know the offices and the services offered to the student body. Um, from what I've heard and from what I've seen personally and talked to these offices is a lot of times uh, many counselors do not know the services provided by these offices. They don't have those uh, relationships established with these offices, which are, I believe, essential, right? 
And I think that some form of training with those offices should be mandatory. So I wanted to bring up this discussion uh, um, to the council and see what your thoughts were on this. Um, I'm, that's that's all I have for that. You have something, Ray? I'll let you go ahead. Just in response, I think it'd be great to incorporate little pieces of this at the two training sessions and the retreats, you know, in the summer and then and the start of spring term. And, um, you know, our advisors set up amazing training for us to really get to know the university and a couple of things at each of those would be great. Mike. I'll even add, I mean, I think I wouldn't call coming into like the conference, like the set chambers of retreats, like make it into like an actual like retreat retreats. Like you go somewhere and like it's actual like team building bonding experience. Like I think we could even weave that into something like that. Well, just a direct response to Mike. Um, I agree with you. Um, you know, retreat is retreat, but, but you know, still have the training. I'm not, you're not saying that. Oh, so just wanted to clarify that. Um, okay. I, I don't, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't, let's, let's think about this. <laughs> yeah. So when Will came and uh, talked to me about this and approached me about this, just know that Armando and I are having conversations about developing a more accessible curriculum around leadership development over the summer and for this new council and looking at doing some kind of a hybrid model um, for the summer so that because there's just so much information and so much onboarding and so much that people need to learn. And so wanting to do that during the summer and offering it via hybrid model so that there's opportunity for people who aren't here who might be in internships or abroad or whatever, right, where they when they have the time that they go through the modules and then um, we'll do some online stuff and then having some additional um, and putting all of this in the, um, what is it, the commitment form when they commit to be a counselor that they are going to need to be doing these things as part of their commitment to become a counselor. And so wanting to incorporate some of these things that way, um, including some of the trainings and those types of things. So just so you all know, already been thinking about it, we know that there is a lot more content that needs to happen before people actually get here. And it's really hard to do that in the summer when people are everywhere. But it, it does not mean that we can't find ways to make it more accessible. And so Armando and I have been working on that and thinking about what that curriculum will look like. And so just know that uh, this next year will probably be a little bit more prescriptive about what that looks like for the incoming council. Awesome. Yes, Will. I have a quick question. I do think that's great. You know, having the counselor sign essential. Um, what about like actually adding it to the Constitution? They're like, you know how you're looking for revisions. I hadn't added this yet because I wanted to discuss it first. But like, is that a little extra? Is it not? I, I personally think we should add it in there just so, you know, posterity's sake. But I don't know. Mike. No, go ahead, Mike. I so this is actually gonna lead into one of my next projects. Once we get this election code finished, once we get the um revisions to the constitution, the next amendment I plan on introducing is um an actual code of conduct handbook. So we have this hand we had we had a handbook that was kind of bizarre. It's like more like bylaws, but they called it a handbook that we got rid of two years ago. But I think what TSAC and our lacks is a structured handbook. Of like how to conduct meetings, how to conduct yourself, how to get integrated into the council, and and uh, just that's just kind of one of the things in the back burner at the moment until we get some more things done. But I think that can absolutely be implemented into this next kind of project here that I'm going to start working on here next month or so. Awesome. Go with. Uh, so directly in the handbook, but not necessarily. Well, it's it'll, like if it gets codified, technically part of the constitution, but not like an amendment itself. But. Yeah. Separately, okay. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna do two more minutes because we have to discuss this food pantry resolution, and then we have people coming in. Uh, so go ahead, Mike. 
but yeah, no, this handbook would just be like some like how to run your conduct yourself in the meeting, stuff like that. What's that gonna be like? It's it's also gonna have it contain the rules for how we conduct ourselves in meetings, like the strict rules we follow in the meetings, so like whatever we'd like. Because most governments, most decorumed establishments that conduct business have something like that. Like, hey, do not call out a member by name. Don't do this, this, and this. So that's what this is going to be, and it's going to be binding because I feel like we've had two years of two years of craziness. No, it's afterwards. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. I'll, ha I'll handle it. Re. I got you. But that's just a thought I've had. And I think we can have to implement what you want there into it. So. Okay. Anybody else on that? I was just going to say, I don't think constitutionally it's needed in there because it doesn't affect business. This is training and onboarding. So it's kind of separate, if that makes sense. But I hear what you're saying, and it could be in the code book, guidebook, whatever y'all want to call it. Correct. Their contract. Sweet. Awesome. Let's let's move on. Um, food pantry donation resolution. Alejandro. Oh my God. Yes. So I have a resolution. Um, can you can pull it up? So this is going to be a resolution for monthly donations to the food pantry. Um, it's basically, so the abstract, the Student Advocacy Council acknowledges the growing challenges students face with rising costs, especially regarding food. We pay tribute to the efforts of our predecessor, Kate, uh, Kyle Haley, who initiated the MSU Denver Food Bank in 2007, later renamed the Roadrunner Food Pantry in 2008 due to increased student needs. Since 2019, the Roadrunner Food Pantry, also known as Rowdy's Corner, has noticed a rise in student food insecurity, leading to a high demand in the pantry services. To meet these needs, the pantry is working hard to provide not only essential food, but also considering dietary restrictions. Additionally, it strives to create a welcoming and secure environment, encouraging students to seek assistance comfort comfortably, even when dealing with complex emotions and seeking support. Whereas TSAC will continue to acknowledge the growing challenges that the student body faces, food insecurity being one of the biggest challenges we want to address and resolve. Therefore, be it resolved, the Student Advocacy Council will donate a total of $1,600 per month to Rowdy's Corner, sourced through the stipends from the officers that are no longer serving in the SGT SAC Council for the spring 2024 semester. These donations will take place at the end of each month, where the final donation to Rowdy's Corner will be at the end of May 2024. Therefore, be it further resolved, SGT SAC will allocate $1,600 worth of food, snacks, and any hygienic items monthly that are requested by Rowdy's Corner. Rowdy's Corner will send an itemized spreadsheet to SGT SAC on the items they require and would like for SGT SAC to, to donate. In the spreadsheet, the following must be provided. The link to purchase the items, the unit price, the quantity, and the vendor if applicable. Therefore, be it further resolved, Rowdy's Corner can only request items that can benefit the student's well-being on campus. These things must consist of basic grocery needs, prepackaged food, vegan or vegetarian options, and gluten-free options as well. Rowdy's Corner must submit the spreadsheet to the budget chair by the last Thursday of each month, so TSEC can order the items for, for Rowdy's Corner. The, for, the first donation will be in February 2024, therefore it be enacted. That is lovely. Perfect. Okay, well, let's start a discussion of seven minutes. Ping, 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 ping. Okay. Anybody has anything to say? Yes, Will? I have but um, one slight concern for this bill. I, as far as to my understanding, these counselors' uh, money, right? They're the money that, you know, they get paid. They, as far as to my knowledge, are not con completely taken out, like, out of TSEC as of yet. Um, th that happens at the end of this month. And unless someone tells me that's not correct, then please do so, because that's to my understanding. So I think mm -hmm. potentially or there could be wording, right, that could be added, like if these counselors do not show up, unless 
they do not get paid when they showed up, but then that would mean for the rest of the semester, they're not getting paid their money. Right. So that's my concern. And yeah. So you're asking about the count. So the, the two counselors that these stipends will be utilized through at this moment would be the positions that were held by Kristen Nergard and Naomi Jacques because oh, Tom and okay. Paul have not been removed nor have stepped down from the council. That is a different okay. thing. So right, these, just, are, these are the counselors who have officially been off. Yeah, okay. off. That, okay. Not off, I'm sorry. That is very yeah, no. morbid. But yeah. removed from the council. Yes. So okay. that's these two. Okay. Transition. 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 Thank you. That's a better word. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Does I that just, answer that? Yes. Clear, that I clear? was under the wrong assumption. Okay. Thank you. Have have you, Alejandro, or whoever, uh, someone talked to Rowdy's Corner Oversight Leadership Supervision about this potential donation and partnership? And are they on board with everything that is being asked of them in order to receive this donation? Yes. Yeah, so I actually met with them on Tuesday over Teams. Um, I basically showed them the resolution that I made and asked them if there was anything that they think might need to be changed. They said everything was perfectly fine and they are on board with this. Um, they were actually looking into getting vegetarian, uh, vegan options and gluten free options because currently they don't have those um, available. So they thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get those um, options as well. But yeah, everything's all good. Does the they include professional staff or is the they students? Uh, yeah, so I met with uh, Angelica and Richard as well. Okay. Good. Yeah. Or, no, no, let, the, let them go first. We'll get Mike and then Will. Um, oh. Dr. Barone, I mentioned this to you. I understood you had some concerns about this. Does this new system where we just purchased the food for them instead of giving the money yeah. fix that concern? I think so. As long as is it being delivered to them? How's that going to work? Go, go ahead. So my when they were building this bill out or resolution, I had told them our initial concern with them, you know, just throwing money at departments. I said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We are fund direct things. So TSAC can provide direct resources to fulfill this X, Y, mm -hmm. and Z need. Um, so that's what this is caveating. This is our way of donating. X amount of dollars in this format to sure. the pantry through the donation through the donation. And are you comfortable making those purchases? Yes, for them? I am How comfortable making right. those purchases. My question now to the council, I was going to do this clarification and account question. Do we all have. What are they envisioning if they want you all to help with vegan, vegetarian, X, Y, and Z options? What are they envisioning that we as the council will be purchasing for them? Each month. Yes, yeah, so um, they had mentioned that they found like this other website that has um, like the vegan options and stuff that they were looking for. So it's more of a, like prepackaged meals and then also obviously like snacks that are vegan friendly, vegetarian friendly or um, gluten free. So it's almost like we'll be paying for like prepackaged meals, food service style yeah. to help fund and put into the refrigerators. Yeah. OK, that works. Thank you. John? I just remember one of the workers at the food pantry brought to my attention about a month or two months ago that the employees do not have access to the toilet paper bins there. So AHAC or whoever is supposed to man those bathrooms, they're running out of toilet paper and the workers don't have a key to open it up. And one work was specific to me was like, I don't want to take on that responsibility. I would like whoever provides the toilet paper to be refilled. So I'm thinking either we create some keys or have access to keys so that people, ourselves or whoever works there can go in and open the toilet paper dispensers and refill it if a hack or whoever is responsible is not available so that the employees are not in there without toilet paper. Because the person pulled me to the side about that. Ah, uh, Seika. This is a Seika issue. 
So if any, you guys can look into that. Okay, yeah, I'll look into that. Uh, make sure, bring it up to AHEC. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet, okay. Three, just a quick tweak. Um, stipends from officers that are no longer active in the council. I just changed yeah. that wording. He has to accept it. Oh. I'd like to propose a, fin a friendly amendment with a word change of, I don't even know what it was before, serving. Active members. No longer active. Change to active. Yeah. You accept it? Yeah, I accept it. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Cool. Anything else? Mike, you have seven seconds. Five. Yeah. Go. Um, so the endorsements, I think Rena endorses, right? Are those at the top? Oh, can we can we put the two endorsements there? <laughs> oh my. Huh? I had to do it. Oh, let, we're gonna vote right now. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, we're I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, I motion we vote for this. Matt has a quick question. Okay, uh, go, make it quick, Matt. Okay. Well, I just had a point of clarification that if Friendly amendment goes to the council, not the author of the bill. That was all. Per, yeah, he's correct. Per Roberts, or right Roberts rules, Matt. Correct. And I just wanted I to bring to it again. up because I feel again. like it caused contention last semester. Yeah. Right, but I mean, if he if he accepts it, then. Like, because he could also withdraw his bill if he wanted to. If, okay, if we so like, if he doesn't accept, I'd just like to to the okay. to the council propose a friendly amendment changing the word "serving" to be "active" regarding the members that are no longer yeah. active for this term. Yeah, no, I think this, this is about like they're uh, about Robert's rules. It's not about the language. It's about Robert's rules about like who should be this proposed to the your friendly amendment. But mm -hmm. it's just like. I mean, well, if he didn't like the, if he didn't like what you had to say, he could just withdraw his bill. All right. Well, in that case, does is anybody opposed to the word change? No. 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 Same. I accept it as well. So. Okay. Cool. cool. I say yes. That sounds perfect. No, because That's we need we need John. Oh, we still meet quorum. We still meet quorum. Is that is that allowed? Yeah. There's two online too. Okay. Cool. Uh, I motion we vote on this bill. I second that. Cool. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Any obs uh, any objections? Any abstentions? It passes. Yay. We have uh, ten minutes. I say we take. I motion that we take a break while we uh, we have our our speakers coming at two. I second. Awesome. Is this a recess? All right, we get yeah, it done my, now. My computer's what? Oh, no, you have a plug? Anybody have a, a cord that Mike can borrow for? I have one. I'm always jealous that you're eating. No, no, no. So do I. Oh, you're fine. Well, let's. Yeah, it's a This will take a minute. I just can't. No, you're good. Hop into the, you know how to get to the one. Get into that in the governing documents and then constitution. Perfect. All right, whatever. So, what you do, you're in. Okay, this out a little bit more. Now you get this out a little bit more. Give me a minute. Oh. Oh, I see. All right, so here, the dots, looking at version history. We finished our meeting on 
Valentine's Day here. So what we want to do is open the file, not restore. Open it. Save it as. Okay. Don't restore. Just do a save as. Oh yeah, that's okay. Right. So save right. as and say extract. Leave it in the same thing and call it and just at the end of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Same file, then oh, here you can change the name <laughs> and call it. Um, do a dash after that, or actually, yeah, and do a dash say tracked changes. And then Armando will know, and then we'll rename the, the other file, the most recent one. Okay. Got you <clears throat> went to version history and put it in. You were able to get to version. Sure. No. It has all the versions that's ever been touched. So with this version history. Like oh, yes, before I accept it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We use checked. Yep. So now we're going to rename uh, rename it. Just right click it. Okay. Yes. This is the one that's accepted everything. Probably, yes. All right. So now we'll rename this as uh, um, Armand, we call it recovered. Uh, recovered from recovered document. Just say recovered. Covered and final. How's that? So that's the one where I've accepted all the changes. Whether you use that or not, both of them are going to be there. It's called track changes, and then the recovered one where I've, I've accepted. Okay. Yep. And then we also have, yeah, we have the original one. Before anybody edited, you don't need that. Okay, you got it. Hallelujah. I hate institution. Yeah, I feel like I did. I'm an editor. Are you kidding? Bad wording. And also, like, when it things. That's fine. But see, everybody can just read. I suggest. Here's what I suggest. You put up a split screen. So the left side, yes, we'll have all the mess. Okay. Because there are things like may use Robert Rules of Order. I changed will to met, you know, things that are important. That that are meaningful. Right, because it's not cut and dried that we have to, it's it's choice. And and also I set it as a guideline as well. So some of the wording, I've taken people's advice and put things in, or you know, Mike and I talked about a lot. We went through the whole freaking thing. It was unfun, let me just say. I want a Tootsie Roll for free. Buy me a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> so we're having guests here now coming to this meeting i might have to go feed the meter yeah no for right yeah <laughs> oh it is um what is the get? What is the guest talking oh, about? Yeah. Kenny, talk with your mouth full and tell me what the guests are coming here to talk to us about. Mike, what are they coming in to talk to us about? Well, you can ask them right here. Oh, guest! You can ask him right here. Hi. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Nice. Okay, I'm so glad that's done. Alashmuya. 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 Wait. You didn't send him the unmessy one. You send him. You need to send him the messy one too. Yeah, there's two of them. There's a, that's the um, 
Proposed change doesn't mess you up. It is? Yeah, open door. Oh, oh, maybe I'll laugh. Yeah, I think that's the best one. Okay. <laughs> I want to see. I'm trying to be like. Oh yeah. Okay, what Kanye. Are you Aren't those like Kanye West? Just, 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 just the crux. Just. Oh. Uh, 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 come for at my age. Perceived quite a bit. No. You're just a baby compared to me. What are you talking about age? Yeah, you were probably just in your thirties. I'm in my fifties. I'm my son's age. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I own the post youngness. You know, post young. That's right. Never old. Just <laughs> forever post young. Okay. To go ahead and put it up. Yes. Kenny. Is it Kenny? You'll find him in there. All right, all right. Kenny. Oh, look at you getting all, all Latifa. K E N N Y. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll just go. There it goes. All right. It's coming. So, uh, Kenny, what is, uh, I'm going to plug in, but in case, what's your email, bro? KKU. Beautiful. Thanks, man. Let me know. Let me know if you receive this. I think I just sent it out. Yeah. Yeah. I would love some water. Man. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. It is two o'clock. We are yeah, back it's from been a break. Minute. How you been? Um, we're back from break. We're just waiting for Kenny to pull up materials, but Dr. Benitez is with us in the room. He's gonna talk to us about the faculty diversity task force and some uh, policy language changes in, for faculty uh, handbook. Sweet. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself while we pull this out? Oh, bad timing. It's okay. It's okay. Apologies to all. If she was intro, and I'm gonna own this. I um, put a cookie in my mouth. So give me about five seconds, <laughs> and I will be right with you. That's Take my bad. Time. It's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start by saying hello. Um, I think we're in the afternoon. So good afternoon. I'm Michael, the Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. Also a professor in the, or associate professor, I gotta get that right, in the School of Ed, uh, though obviously I'm not doing very much you know, teaching these days. 
Uh, I've been here about four and a half, almost five years, and I'm part of this uh, faculty resolution task force. The task force includes different members. It includes uh, uh, Dr. Chalene Lechuga, Dr. Devika, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, John Massarini, among some others. So it's a, it's a, it's a larger uh, committee. Um, we've been at this for about two, almost three years. This is when um, Dr. Bill, uh, who is over in academic affairs, or Bill, uh, put together the faculty resolution task force when he was serving in the interim. And we could go ahead and probably put the presentation up if it's okay, Ken. Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. Only because it said it, it went through on this end, so. Let me know when you get that. Uh, but also say it's an important undertaking, right? I mean, this is a conversation that started uh, 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 and grew out of the resolution that was uh, written by Gita and Chicano Studies and Africana Studies, the BIPOC resolution, in response to take some action steps uh, and really letting the community know that we're here, Jan, that we're here. So, but before we you know, keep it going and I continue, I just want to kind of get this. I don't know everyone here. So to get a sense of who's all here hanging out with me. Uh, I'm Alejandro Casillas and I'm the budget chair. All right on, right on, good to meet you. Hi, I am Denny Palacios, chair. Absolutely. How you doing? Well, nice meet you. Hey, meet you. Right on, likewise. Can we get Kenny? <laughs> I'm Kenny, I'm the executive assistant for DSEC. Right on, good to meet you. I see. Michael and if I don't know we we are sharing the purple and white bondage so right on okay yeah. <laughs> I'm Ree I am this is my second year with DSAC and I have seen you around and um, I'm a master's student for behavioral health right clinical on. behavioral health all right on good stuff <laughs> and you know brother John <laughs> I'm in, on the sustainability uh, chair committee right on beautiful well of course, Cynthia and you know, Cynthia and I collaborate quite a bit. So, and then we have online, right? Yeah, I'm Matthew Rathbun. I'm the Public Relations Committee Chair. Right on. Hi, Dr. Mites. Uh, I'm Gabe Trujillo, um, and I am the current state, one of the current state cab reps. Oh, right on, right on. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, so, and let me just kind of pick up where I left off a little bit. Uh, so what we did, you know, and just standing by what we're going to say we do is uh, one of the areas that, that, that was uh, included in there is, are we revisiting and doing justice, especially to the RTP process as it relates to invisible labor um, uh, among women, among people of color, but also the intersection, right, that is women of color. Uh, that triangulation is just so important to kind of mark as part of the conversation. Um, got the committee together, started meeting, right on to, to Bill for uh, kind of convening us. Shalane uh, and Devika, just big up, because while everybody's contributing in the semi, they're really kind of leading, right? The brother that work and they've done a fantastic job. This is two and a half years uh, in the making. When you think about structural transformation work, really doing the vetting, the community piece, the assuring the buy-in. Uh, so let me see, is the press up? All right. But it does include particularly a rep from a faculty senate, COCD, uh, the deans, the provost office, and ODI, and that's kind of the makeup of the committee. And of course, the focus, thank you, uh, the focus is, uh, review tenure and promotion and how are we accounting for cultural relevance and DEI work and work that normally kind of goes unmarked and becomes additive as opposed to us recognizing a good amount of that work and integrating into the already existing structure to not one recycle a wheel but the second piece is just really kind of acknowledge uh, the work that has been going on right so this is a, a, a move to capture so that phenomenon Let's go ahead to uh, okay. Thank you. Some of the goals of this changes eventually, you know, uh, it was for faculty buy-in, not only faculty by way of thank you of the importance of this conversation, 
but especially in relationship to our anchor mission institution, our modified access, uh, open identity of who we are, right? We get students as they come in. So what does it mean truly to lean on serving Ness in a way where it's like, it's not about me, like it's not about you. And that includes, you know, faculty and staff. It's about who and how we serve and the way that we tie our practices and our teaching to students more than anything else, right? Why are they important? You're going to look in there. It gives some credence to excellence, especially um, teachers doing that innovative pedagogic work. It meets our students' needs. We acknowledge the labor. I just kind of talked on that piece. Uh, it offers discourse and language for us to be able to uh, uh, put in there and offer that different epistemic undertaking with respect to how that sits in dominant uh, processes. Uh, and provide a space just for that ongoing conversation, but it also asks us to some degree to even think more critically about who and how representation means in faculty by way of that experience that is brought to the table. Next. Uh, when we think about implementing it, in this case in particular, right, the guidelines is the uh, faculty uh, handbook, and the very particular section is uh, the RT, uh, review, tenure, and promotion uh, in particular which includes uh, service, scholarship, and teaching, all right? Folks ask, is it going to increase the workload? That was one of the big parts. You know, we all know that conversation is going on. No, the answer is no. Uh, but I think we need to be intentional in some occasions about the way uh, we, we can work with faculty to shift some things. But generally speaking, after doing a good bit of just research and digging into and kind of finding out what's going on, a lot of our faculty already do this um, quite a bit. It's just not being accounted for. Next. Uh, right here, talked about it. Yes, exhaustive, but critical fun, because that's how we do. Uh, you know, looked at case studies, looked at different institutions, uh, certainly looked at some feedback from here. Uh, and, you know, uh, and done particularly with some collaboration from both the diversity and the uh, welfare committees, the faculty senate. Next. Uh, you know, when we did a survey, what did the survey show uh, with respect to wanting these changes or thinking these changes are important? Uh, we got 74 responses. 70% of them were cat one. 70% support the changes. They think it's about time. Uh, you know, almost 90% said E and I practices are important. 57% said, yeah, current labor is not captured. It's almost 60%. Then you have an 84% high confidence ability to use new guidelines successfully, meaning we trust each other to be able to write the have uh, have the right conversations with the right guidance and make the necessary adjustments and changes to elevate our cultural relevance. Nice. So it's a little just summary of the proposed language. Uh, up there, understanding of good teaching. Really, the focus here is: look, if we strengthen our teaching and think about who we serve. Right, understand what our anchor mission is and, and really uh, invite sort of a self of, of that grounding and anchoring around cultural relevance, that good teaching is good teaching. It's not just about our students of color or queer students or students with disabilities or our vets. It's, it's really about uh, good teaching and meeting everyone where they are. Right? That means leaning into that servingness with that praxis lens, that critical pedagogy and that cultural uh, relevance, especially when we think about uh, the canon of, of, of different uh, culturally relevant traditions in the classroom. That, that may be asset based, that may be um, uh, not only cultural relevance, it could also be uh, just cultural pedagogies. Next. Um, I could go into what is equity. I'm going to maybe assume this group has a, a grounding or y'all want me to break it down right quick. All right. A lot of people confuse equity for equality, and I think they could offer a bunch of pictures. I do it too to kind of illustrate the difference. I could also make you do like an exercise, like a shoe activity to kind of show you how it works. It's actually kind of fun, although I don't know how y'all feel about sharing shoes right now. That said, exactly my point. I will say that equity is about a second layer of fairness. Equity is first and foremost, especially racial equity and other forms of equities, gender equity, this uh, ability equity, it's about mending. It's never about fairness. It's about uh, reconciling who was out and how we need to catch up and how we fill equity gaps so that the fairness is part of the kind of generational, right, under undermaking that is creating a re-fairness. 
And people have to understand that piece around equity, that it's about demanding and the reconciliation more than it is about the fairness of everyone gets the same. And who gets angry because we have some gaps to fill because history happened and it is kind of what it is. Inclusive pedagogy, we, um, right? Inclusive pedagogy is really accounting for, you know, who do we have in our classroom, both in content where appropriate, but also in process. Right. We know the curriculum where that can happen easily, our ethnic studies programs on and on. But we uh, uh, often uh, don't think about what does it mean to make an adjustment, whether somebody uh, has an, uh, a challenge, whether they need a computer, whether they work a certain amount of time. Right. Those are processes that are part of that inclusive thinking beyond also the content that's tied to part. And then we could get into structures and policies, which is, well, where we're at with this next. Uh, some of the changes, and you know, I'll just I'll, I'll read it just by way of being kind of the academic, you know, traditional academic space. But uh, I'll let you also kind of read most of the bullet points on your own. I'll just define what it is. It's when effective teachers employ teaching practices that recognize and demonstrate structural and situational awareness of equity within and beyond the classroom. Consideration should be given to the practices rooted in empathy and responsiveness to lived experiences and realities. So that include practices that prioritize thoughtful, reflexive, evidence-based learning that empowers students with reasoning, critical thinking, and access to whatever the outcome is going to be. Then you have some bullet points. So you, know, you think about instructional design. Uh, you think about the identities and abilities. Uh, you know, well, we, we think about uh, the advising aspect of it. And we really got to account for it all, right? That's kind of a holistic model. Next. Yes. No, please. Yeah, go back. Yes. Having issues and problems, just to send them to the oh, just to send students to the website and and to Canvas, you know, not the website to Canvas to look at the syllabus. I mean, it's not my experience. I'm just noticing this, and I hope that's something that's mm -hmm. encouraged for instructors. Yeah, and that is part of a process of a process and procedure and kind of tying in that piece because yeah. that's part of the access, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it matters. Yeah, thank you. No, no, you're good. Here's just some of the, the kind of proposed changes, right? And really uh, to, to recognize the seven and eight. And I don't know if you're familiar. Now, this is pretty much the last slide. So I'm going to, um, the next slide is, is just kind of showing a lot of the work that went into splicing and dicing in this course with lines and red parts that faculty sent it loves and that I had to get used to in terms of how it's all one piece of paper. You know where I'm flowing with that. So up to y'all if y'all want to go through some of that or just have some combo or I could leave it up in case y'all interested in following the dots. So, but, you know, um, some of the, the, you know, we add language, rec uh, recognizing, creation of new knowledge, some frameworks, uh, bring some focus to all these different pieces, recognize what's already going on and how it's represented in, in a, a, a array of ways. Uh, and, you know, uh, making some suggestions uh, for how uh, we can think more expansively about what this looks like moving forward and really capture all the different experiences we have represented here. Next. And then here, the rest of it is, if you go next, that you, you, but you see where I'm going with that. So I don't think you have much interest in this, though I could be wrong, and I'll ask Shalane if you do, if I could share it. I think it's okay. I just want to make sure. But I think it should be. I should be able to share it. Um, with this group, or that you could keep it, and Kenny could share it now. That said, I have a questions. Copy. I have comments. a copy, and I can share it. If, uh, if right. you guys would like to see it, I can put it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. What did I do with time? We have, yeah, we have 14 minutes left. How are you doing? I'm chill, man. I, you know, that was embracing my my old school micro machine guy. You remember that, oh, man? <laughs> Questions or comments? Yeah, please. Just to get to know you better, what's uh, what's one good example of 
the changes uh, have been proposed and whatnot and, you know, have gone through. Yeah. What's one of your personal favorites? Uh, I, I think for me, is when we think about traditional representations and how those are created through, right, of a kind of Western and linear epistemic thinking, right, it's like mostly white man or a heterosexual man. And we could add on an array of intersections to that around dominance to, 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 you know, who sits at the margins. But things like community participatory action work, things like publications and non-for-profit grants, right, and especially... Uh, a lot of the faculty who are doing that that work with uh, community or thinking about uh, different high impact practices or experiential learning on the way that uh, maybe if a faculty was a lead on uh, an internship study that that could, you see what I'm saying so I mean uh, that's one part of the cultural relevance but I think the other one is is really recognizing how you shift to meet your students' needs. And that could come in so many ways. And I gave those examples around a computer or more time or extending. And it doesn't mean, no, just let them be. It just means really think about what students are. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brinez. Um, I always love the work your office does. I think it's one of the more important offices on this campus. So I appreciate you coming in here today and um, discussing these changes. Um, what would the timeline look for this? Because I'm assuming this is a proposed change. It's going to go up to either the president or the board of trustees. Um, what does that look like in terms of timeline, and what can we do to support you in that in that in that work? Yeah, I, I think uh, so. The timeline is the end of June um, because we're hoping that uh, these changes could be adopted and uh, uh, and then implemented in time for fall and for these to be part of uh, the the faculty guidelines. Uh, come fall 24, at least I, I, I believe that's the, the timeline. Uh, we all know how shared governance works. So let me throw that caveat in there. And shared governance is shared governance for a reason. It means that uh, we're going to sit with a, a continuum of perspectives uh, that make their way to the platform of contemplation around this, you know, possibilities. <laughs> uh, and you know, man, you know, man, I got to add a little spoken word flair to it. Right? I can't, you know, I can't just let it go. But it's also real, right? Because, uh, right, I, I just got off. Let me, you know, I just got off this, uh, the health equity conference. If you know that's going on right now, and it's fantastic. And our keynote speaker was uh, Loretta Ross. And if you don't know her work, she's one of the heroes of women's rights and late and, and uh, across a variety of areas and feminist rights and civil rights. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, this Dr. Ross, Loretta, I know. <laughs> Loretta Ross is the. Uh, the legend, civil rights activist, scholar, Loretta Russ. So, all right, her, her, her conversation focused on the cancel culture and the framework of a call-in grounded in radical love. And so much of what I learned around holding on to these tensions and conversations, part it comes from like her, Chuck T. Butler, and the Victor Lewis's of the world. So I really appreciate it that when you hold on to the space, and there's another quote by a gentleman, um, a uh, scholar by the name of uh, Ed Langerin, who's a philosopher out of St. Olaf, that kind of speaks to what does it mean to lean on the mutual endeavor shift of coexistence and the way we create social contracts, right? What does it mean to really uh, think about not the hurting, but uh, the showing up for an outcome, even as we stand apart, right? And and I appreciate that because it's really just how we're going to exist in neo-colonial enterprises. It's, no other way to nicely say history was and isn't informs, and therefore we then respond in ways that require of us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. We're not exempt. So all to say that it is faculty, and so are we having the first read? Did we, or we did the first read, we did a second read, some friendly amendments. We're still under conversation. Hopefully it'll go up for a vote February 28th when we next meet. But if you have more friendly amendments and how that goes, and Folks want to see something change that, boom. Which I actually, for some reason, dig those spaces. Maybe that's the post-colonialist in me. Oh. We rubbed your discourse. Oh. Yeah. Good at navigating. Yeah, I think so too. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to own that one because it's no joke. No. But it's all it's all about leaning in, in really into the love. I I, I don't, you know. You know this work. Uh, you you gotta you gotta uh, secure your your peace and your joy, um, and just see it for the good. Um, headache producing, 
heart aching at times, uh, but a loving, critical struggle, the fun struggle that it is. I'll put on my mental health hat just to say. Shore yourself up, too. Yes. And anybody in that kind of work must make sure they're strong and healthy to be able to That's right. take it on. Cookies and Twizzlers. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love the fact that this is centered on women of color slavery. Why do you think? Because 57, it is above half, but it is not. I mean, the 50%, the people that, I mean, the of, of staff or faculty that believed that labor does not go accounted for. Mm -hmm. So that 47% is a high number to me mm -hmm. when it comes not Absolutely. only yeah. not only to like faculty and staff, but to students as well. Mm -hmm. um, is there, because that, that, that also empowers, let's say, higher structures in the hierarchy yeah. to not change the status quo. Is there a plan for that? Well, absolutely, man. I have it in the bottle. I pan in it. You know, I'm just willing to sell and make millions. Um, I just did. I figured. I just, yeah. I just wanted to hear it for... No, I think I want to respond in this way, because I appreciate the uppercut, right? Um, Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I mean that in, in the, really the most beautiful of ways. Um, right? The question that you ask yourself in, in navigating and negotiating spaces of dominance is really... Um, what, what is for you to own and what, what's not for you to own? And what role do you have in the sphere of influence that you get to help buy in and shape, not necessarily change? It's not your role. It's not our role to change. It's our role to facilitate what transformation could look like. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, um, you do it with love, you do it with care, you do it with grace. We can let the subjectivities um, and the traumas that we very realistically take in, day in, day out, dictate um, the way the spirit moves forward and our care for the work. It's not about us or me. And even as we have our feelings and the way it lands, we can show up saying, because I experienced this shit, you're going to experience this shit. No, no, no. No, no, right. So it's also to say that um, with respect to the ownership, uh, you're going to have always a 40 or a 30, a hopefully more like a 20 or a 10, uh, difference that has so many different politics informing right. that particularity, right? For some, it may be because they really like, not nah, this, hell no. For others, it may be, oh man, like I'm just in a situation where I have this and that and that, it's just going to be more work. Or for somebody else, it may be, oh man, I already put in 60 hour weeks. And right. So I think there's so much that goes into that. Um, so our role is to be graceful, understand how we exist, move through, Right, be the buffalo to get to the other side of the storm. They move gracefully, but they're going directly through it. And and um, and and here we are. I love that we've gotten to where we've we, we've gotten. I think the I think the tremendous work by the people that that made it happen, especially you know the leads, uh, Devik and Chilean, um, is quite an undertaking, but a necessary undertaking. What we've been able to do that I appreciate is integrated this work into the work. This is not additive. They get, this is, this is a shift in what's priority and how do we take your time and invest it in a way that makes sense versus adding more labor. And that piece is important. And the real part, man, like in a lot of ways, I think a lot of students don't see, uh, I'm not saying we're perfect, but I am saying that we are continuing push to assure that there's a, an integrative, a, a highly intentional integrative element to how we align praxis with priority, um, with care. Yeah, I think I think I would agree with, like for for people of color, like we we do this already, and I mean, no, I don't I don't know if already, you know, again, we're not perfect. I do think that this is this requires a lot of labor from people who are not in this side of the conversation. Um, so I don't know. I'm just interested and see how it's gonna turn out. Um, and I I will like. Yeah, I want to see this this through. Let's see, man. Hope, you know, hope is a beautiful thing. So, uh, still get about what's going on. Okay. We have uh, Jose Ramirez. Hi, Jose. 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 Hi, Jose.
understanding some beliefs that we have. Yep. And not and 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 not that we don't carry them with us, we're always gonna carry them, but we can turn them off in spaces when we do think about who this is about. Right. And I just one last comment. The whole comment where like, no, it's go it's not going to work a workload. It might not add a more administrative workload to people. But it is definitely going to add a, like a more mental and emotional workload to whoever it is yeah. feels challenged by this yeah. guideline. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Right on. Thank yeah. you. Oh dear. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Benitez. Anybody else? Anything? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. One hippopotamus. <laughs> no. What? Uh, uh, what did you say, Ken? John, we are going to enter your moment of silence. Well, first of all, I'd like to take a time out to honor my late mother, Doris Jean Dandridge, who was born January the 10th, 1942, and transitioned this life February 16th, 2025, uh, 2015. Okay, and we'll start with a minute of silence now. Thank you all for honoring me with my request. It it I don't need validation, but it shows that you all have a level of thoughtfulness and compassion to allow my ancestor to be remembered in this space for future generations. And to each of you on this council, I thank you for being open and free and collective. I appreciate that. Thanks, John. Okay, I then perfect. I motion we adjourn this meeting. I second that. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Any aye. objections? Any abstentions? Cool.